episode 31 of My Doll's House Diary. Now in today's episode I'm going to be showing you how to make and fit doors inside your doll's house. Now I'm going to be making one for the kitchen, a lovely glazed door, and a more traditional style door for the study. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to work out is what size strip you're going to need for the internal door surround. And first of all, you need to measure the depth of the wood that your doll's house is built from. And mine across there is nine millimetres or three eighths of an inch. And then I recommend using a three millimetre thick piece of strip or one eighth of an inch. So I'll be using a nine by three strip. Now, if you haven't got um, a strip of that size, then you can just use three millimetre sheet wood or one eighth of an inch sheet wood, and we can cut the strips from that. So once you've got the measurement that you need for your strip, you need to measure the height of your door opening. And if, like me, you've got a gap between your flooring, then you need to measure it from there right down to the bottom, not to the height of your flooring, because the bottom strip will sit in there. And then if, again, like me, you're renovating a doll's house and the door has had a little bit of bashing around, you might find that one side is higher than the other. So always measure both sides and then take the shortest of those measurements. You can then cut your pieces. And I had a very slight difference between the two sides, so that piece goes in there. And that bit goes there. So the right hand side from here, I think was slightly shorter by about half a millimetre. But still take the shortest measurement and that way we'll get a nice square frame. And then slot those in there and then you want to measure the width that you're left with. So use your fingers to sort of really press those against the sides so that we're getting a true measurement. And again, measure along the top and along the bottom. If you've got a brand new doll's house or you've just built it from a kit, then your doors, uh, chances are they're going to be perfectly square. But like I say, if you've done it from a renovation, you may get a difference. And again, I had a just under one millimetre difference. So then you want to cut those pieces and fit those into place. And we're just sort of dry fitting at this stage just to make sure that the pieces fit nicely into the frame. Like that. And I just again had to make my top piece slightly shorter so it's not holding itself in very well at this stage. If that falls out that's why because again the frame wasn't completely square. And then let me just move you in a little bit closer. So as you can see there, I've got a couple of rough edges around the outside edges, again, where my frame wasn't square after I'd sort of bashed it about taking the old frame out. But you don't need to worry about that because what we'll be doing is then adding a surround on the outside of the door, which will cover those internal um, sides. So I'll be using this. This is actually skirting board that I'm going to be using as my surround. And that will then sit right along the edge there and cover up these internal surrounds. Same along the top there and we'll make a nice mitre join up here to join those pieces in. So you don't need to worry if at this stage it doesn't look very neat because we will neaten it off with the surround. So once you've done your sizing and cut your pieces you can now take those back to your work area. To hinge the doors, I'm going to be using the pin hinge method as I do for my furniture pieces. So before we actually construct the frame, we need to drill the holes for the pins in the top and bottom pieces. So I'll just put those side pieces to one side for now. And because my top and bottom pieces are different sizes, I've just put a T on the top one there, just so that I don't get those mixed up. So I've got here in my drill a 0.75mm bit. So you just want something that's about the width of a dressmaking pin, which is what I'm going to be using for the hinges. 
But before we actually drill the holes, there are just a couple of things you need to think about. Now the door will be about four and a half, five millimetres deep. And in my case, the frame is nine millimetres. So you need to decide whether you want the door sitting towards the back of the frame or the front of the frame. And I'm going to do it so that the door is sitting towards the front of the frame in each of the central hallway areas. And then you'll have that little bit of an overhang into the rooms at either side. So it doesn't really matter whether you have it sitting towards the front or the back, but whatever you decide upon, then do that same thing in each of the rooms, just to keep it uniform. And then the other thing you want to have a think about is which way you want your door opening into the room. Now in my my real home, each of the doors opens sort of left into the room. Now I don't know if that's a general rule or not, but I would just say in your doll's house, just choose the way that looks more pleasing to the eye. So for my rooms on the left hand side, I'm going to have the doors opening right into the rooms. So if we come back here to the kitchen, imagine that my hand is the door, it will open that way into the room like that and then I will have all of the doors doing that same thing so coming up here into the study into that bedroom the bathroom door will be opening outwards into the um, back landing like that and then each of these doors will open opposite to that so again if you imagine my fingers of the door they'll open that way into the rooms on the right hand side and that's a double door down there anyway and again that little door at the back of the guest bedroom will come in like that so whatever way you choose do it the same on both sides of your house which will look nicer and look more pleasing to the eye so once you've decided upon where you're going to position the door, we can then drill the holes. So you want to come in from the edge about two millimetres, and that's five sixty-fourths of an inch. So just do a little line like that. And then you can turn the piece and then come back again two millimetres from what will be your front edge, so the edge that the door will be flush against. So this will be my edge that's going into the hallway and then you can do your little dot of where to drill the hole and do that on the other one as well and then drill your hole like that and now we can construct the frame. So to create the frame we're just going to glue the top and bottom pieces between the side pieces. So if you just apply glue to each end of the top and bottom pieces. You can see a second hole in there because I just realised I drilled it at the wrong edge of the wood so that's something to think about as well when you're drilling. <laughs> Make sure that the holes are on the same side at the top and bottom. So stand those like that and then join the first one to the top strip and you want to make sure you've got a nice flush edge along the top there and along the bottom and that will create a nice square frame. Let me move up actually into shop there. And that's why when you're cutting them, if your doors are different sizes on each side or top and bottom, that's why it's important to cut to the shortest measurement. And that way we'll get a square frame. Otherwise, we'd need to, um, you know, make a wonky door and that will be noticeable. So it's quite fragile. So you just saw mine just came apart then. So get the pieces together and give them a gentle press. And as the glue begins to take, it will become a little bit more sturdy. Just carefully press all the pieces together. 
and then what you can actually do is bring it into position on your cutting mat so that you're lining it up against the lines and you can check that you've got it square and if not you can just very carefully sort of jiggle it into a square position like that and then press and hold very carefully slide that along your work surface and that can be left to dry so whilst the frame for the study is drying, I've got another one here that I made earlier and this is for the kitchen and I'm going to make a start on the kitchen door. Now to get the sizing of your door, first of all measure from top to bottom of your frame and then you want to deduct about half a millimetre from that height and that will just allow the door to open and close smoothly. And then for the width, measure the width and stick with that width. And then I find that when we come to round one edge of the door, that takes away that sort of quarter of a millimetre or half a millimetre measurement that we need, again, to allow the door to open and close smoothly. So the height is the height of the opening minus half a millimetre, and the width is the width as it is here. So for the kitchen door, I'm going to create a glazed door. So this top part of it here will be glazed. And I sort of build it up a bit like a sandwich, so I'm making three layers. So this is my sort of central layer, and then these mouldings will go to either side. So let me just show you what I mean. So I've got my strips here that will go down each side of the door, like that. And then these horizontal strips will go there, and in the centre there one at the bottom and then I'll do that same thing on the other side and I'll create a couple of panels to go here and then if I just dismantle that and show you what that then looks like from the other side so from the other side of the door that will look like that and what I've then done is create a lip here for my piece of acetate to sit into and then the remaining mouldings I've put the camera stand on the mouldings. The remaining mouldings are then glued into place on this side once everything's been painted. Like that. That one there, sandwiching in that acetate. And that one up there. And then again, the mouldings on there. So that's sort of the idea. Now I won't give you the exact sizes for the pieces because obviously your door opening might be different size to mine but I will just tell you sort of the widths I've used for each piece and how I um, worked it out. So I've started with my door panel which is obviously the width of the opening and then I've gone up about halfway perhaps just a little bit under so that I've got a larger glazed area. So that's that piece and then for my internal um, frames I've done those seven millimeters wide and that's 19 30 seconds of an inch I sit there like that and then for the wider moldings to create that lip I'm doing them nine millimeters wide and that is three eighths of an inch so obviously the side ones are as tall as the door and this measurement is my height of my opening minus that sort of half a millimeter and these horizontal ones are also nine and then you've got a little bit to hang over there for your lip and you don't have to do it exactly like this you might want just maybe glazed panels at the top and you can create all these sort of little moldings to create those spaces that you want You know, if you're having this panel here, you might want to leave it plain or you could put in um, a couple of panels, which I'm going to do, or you could maybe do four panels. You know, have a think about how you want to customise your own door and then I'll have my handle sort of in this central area here. So for this door, I'm using 1.5 millimetre sheet wood, so 1 16th of an inch, so the sort of three 
layers give me a 4.5 millimeter thick door that's a nice nice size door which will be easy then to um, pin hinge so my next job is to cut these panels and then I can glue the first two layers of the door together so there are my two panels and I just cut them so that I'm leaving a two millimeter border around all edges in there and then I've got the two as well for the other side and I just went round and beveled each edge of each piece just by holding it against my sandpaper and sweeping it towards me at a 45 degree angle that sun's really bright on there <laughs> and then I tidied those up in my hand with a piece of 500 grade sandpaper so the first side of the door is now ready to glue together and then I can paint all of the pieces. We'll then be inserting the acetate, attaching the other side and then we can round off our edge. Now normally I like to paint before I round off the edge because obviously we'll be sanding away some of the paint but in this case so that we can get that acetate in there without getting paint on it I like to do it this way and then we can just touch up the paint along the sanded edge. Okay, so let's get some glue and we'll get this fixed together. So I'm going to start by gluing together the internal part of the frame. Just making sure I've got a nice flush edge along the side of those two pieces there. Press those together. And little top piece. Again make sure you've got that nice flush edge along the top as well and use the lines on your cutting mat they really help when you're doing things like this. Bring that up a bit and then you square everything off. Of trying to hold on to everything and press <laughs> press at the same time so I'll just give that a gentle shove so that it's not sticking to my work surface I'm going to let that dry off just for a minute or so and then I can attach the first side mouldings and the more pieces you attach the more sturdy it becomes okay so I'm now going to begin with the second layer into position right along the edge of the door there I think I might have cut that one about half a millimeter too long but that's okay because I can trim that off once this is all dried so press that into place and then I like to do the other side first and then I can cut the horizontal mouldings to the exact size that I need. Good firm press down. Don't forget to remove your excess glue as you go along. It's easier to do it whilst it's still tacky. Like that. And then, although I've cut these to the right size, if there is any sort of overlap, you can then trim it off. So I just, I just tried it in all three positions just in case it fitted snugly into one of them but it is a little bit too long. So just trim a little bit off and then try again. And always just trim a tiny bit and then trim more if you need to. That 
now gives me a nice snug fit in there. Just sand the edge of that one as well. And I want that to be going along the top of the frame underneath because that strip there is a little bit too long. So when I trim that strip off, that will still be square. And as you can see, we're creating that lovely lip at the back there for the acetate to sit into. And I want to sit this one so that it's half and half. So half is overhanging at the back and I've got half stuck to my door. And that's how I measured for my panels down here. Then I know they'll fit nicely into place. And as I've just done that by eye, I'm just going to measure from the bottom to make sure that it's the same distance to each side. Yep, 73 millimetres. Press that down as well. Final one at the bottom. into place. Let me just get those lined up. You know and do make measurements or use spacers for this sort of thing if you're not keen on measuring by eye. So these panels are already trying to lift away so I'm going to be securing all of these pieces with mini clamps. Just get them into position there like that to come over a little tiny bit so I've got a nice straight line down the centre. So I'll just grab my clamps I'm positioning it so it's sort of touching all of those pieces, so the horizontal strip and these panels. So fit on as many as you can and so that they're sort of holding onto all the pieces surrounding them so that everything's going to dry nice and flat. You can also use um, clothes pegs for this if you've got some nice tight clothes pegs. And that piece can then be left to dry. So the door and the separate mouldings are now ready to paint. And I've secured those separate mouldings to a painting sheet with masking tape, which makes them easier to paint and you don't get it all over your fingers. And before you start painting, a good thing to do is just to try the door into your frame. And we're just fitting it sort of top to bottom now. So don't worry if it's tight at the sides, because as I said earlier, we'll be sanding down one edge or rounding one long edge which will help the fit from side to side. So as long as you can fit it into your surround and if it is a little bit tight from top to bottom then just sand a little bit off on your um, piece of sandpaper flat on your work surface and just go along in one direction so you're not rounding off the corners. Okay so I'm now going to give this a coat of paint and I'm also going to paint the surround. So once my paint had completely dried, I gave all of the pieces a gentle sand and I now want to fit the acetate. So I've cut myself here a paper template. So just measure your opening, cut the paper template and then you can use that to cut the acetate. So I've got a piece of acetate here. So attach the template to the sort of straight edges of the acetate. And then you can actually fix that into place with a bit of masking tape. Oops. Let me lay that down flat. Like that. Okay. 
and then you can just use scissors to cut that out. And I just find that weighs a lot easier than trying to make measurements or pencil marks on your acetate. acetate into place I'm using deluxe materials glue and glaze and this is especially for acetate it dries clear and it won't fog the acetate and it's also got this handy application nozzle so just apply a little bit of glue around the little lip there and you really do only need a tiny amount of this so I've just got this new bottle but my last bottle I must have had for good sort of five years or so like that just give the acetate a quick dust between your fingers and then drop that into place Press it down and don't worry if the glue does go onto the front of the acetate because once it starts to dry it becomes almost sort of rubbery and then you can just you know wipe that off with your cocktail stick. So I left the acetate to dry off for about five minutes and now I can attach the remaining mouldings and again I'm going to start with the vertical mouldings at either side of the door. And I sanded the door as well so that it fitted back nicely into the frame. And after you've painted you will find that you'll need to do that again. And because I've sanded I know that this is going to be a little bit too long but I haven't cut it because I'll trim it once it's actually dried into place. So again make sure you're getting a nice flush line along the edge there to the other side so again I'm sandwiching that um, acetate into place with these remaining mouldings okay just making sure that that's nice and flush along that edge let me come around that side And I'm going to be clamping all of these down again. Now my vertical ones, my horizontal ones I mean, which I know are going to need a little bit of trimming. So I'm just making a little score there and then you can move it away from the piece and make the cut and try that again and that can then be glued into place and I'm gluing it there so it's actually flush with the top of the door and not the side mouldings because obviously I'm going to need to trim those off and the same with the remaining two horizontal ones that's a nicer end there so my mouldings are now all glued into place and again I'm going to clamp them all down and then leave that to dry another couple at the top of that strip so just fit on as many as you can so that you're sort of clamping together all of the joins if you can now that the acetate's there I'm not going to be able to um, obviously put one there so I've moved things around a little bit those um, 
panels in the centre there were lifting up so I've used these larger clamps to get right in there and into the centre of those and then just angled a couple of the smaller ones in to hold that next strip in place. So just sort of move things around a bit and get as many on there as you can so that everything's going to dry nice and flat. And I shall now leave that one to dry. So I left the door dry in overnight and the mouldings have all dried nice and flat. And I now want to round off one long edge of the door and this will become the hinged edge of the door. So with your sandpaper flat on your work surface, hold the door at a 45 degree angle and then as you sweep it towards you bring it into an upright position and I'm just being really careful there that I don't put too much pressure onto the acetate. You can see that there but that's just starting to round off so I'll do that a few more times and then I'll turn it over and do that edge of the door as well. So that has now been rounded off on both sides of the door and if I show you from the end there you can see it's just a nice gentle round and that really is enough so that the door will open and close smoothly and that now fits nicely into the frame whereas before it was a little bit tight from side to side but remember I said to you that when you do that rounding off along that edge that will take off just enough so that then it will fit nicely into the frame rather than sanding it before you've rounded. So what we want to do now is put our pins back into the drilled holes to make the indentations into the actual door and then we can drill the holes for the pin hinges. So place the door on your work surface in the frame so that the side you want flush is face down and make sure that the door is pressed flush against your work surface and that the frame is as well. And then I just went through and pushed a pin into each of those drilled holes just to remove any paint that might have been in there. And then you can again use your pin to make that little indentation. So we're not trying to push it into the bottom of the door, we just want to make that little mark in the door for where we need to drill the hole. I'll do that at the top as well. Keep making sure that everything's pressed flat against your work surface. I can't quite see the hole if you turn it around. <laughs> Sure, it's going there actually into the bottom of the door, and you can just pop the door out. Now you can see the little hole again. So, secure your door into your desk vise, and again, I've got that tissue in there so that I don't actually mark the door, and then drill down into the hole, keeping the drill as upright as you can. And again we want to go down by about six millimetres or a quarter of an inch. And then again do your little check with your pin to make sure you've gone down far enough. Put your nail at the top there and that's more than six mil so that's fine. So do that at both ends of the door. So before we actually pin hinge the door I want to attach the handles and I'm going to be using these lovely antique brass lever handles throughout the house and it actually took me quite a while to get hold of these. I used to um, buy them from a, a trade supplier here in the UK um, but they let me down on quite a few orders so I had to source them elsewhere and I found a supplier actually in the US. So I ordered myself a few and they're so nice that I've ordered some for stock as well. So do pop over and have a look in the Etsy shop. They haven't arrived yet so they might be a couple of weeks but I think they're really nice. And they've got the little keyhole as well. And I find that these attach really well using the Gorilla wood glue. And I'm going to position it so it's sitting centrally on that side panel and so that the pull bit is sort of centrally 
on this panel here or hanging over the centre of that. So get them roughly into position then you've sort of got time to jiggle them about get them in exactly the right place and again I'm doing it by eye but do use your rule if you'd feel happier doing it that way. I'm just making sure they're sort of sitting straight along that side panel and in the centre as well. They look really nice. So give that a good press down and hold it into place for a minute or so. And then you can just prop your door up and attach one to the other side. And use that first one as a guide so that they're level on there. And again, once you're happy with the position, sort of press and hold. Okay, so we're now ready to hinge the door. So take one of your pins, line up your door so that it's sitting flush against the frame, and then insert the pin. And it might take a while to sort of find the hole in there, but you just need to keep manoeuvring your door. We know it's in the right place because we've measured it. What you can do is actually, with the first pin, you can push the pin through first and then push the door onto it so you can actually see the hole, makes it a little bit easier, like that. And then pop the top part into place. And I just want to test it at this stage. Find the hole in the top there, that was a lot easier. And then you want to make sure that it opens nice and smoothly, and that's the way that it will be opening into the kitchen that way. I'm pleased with that. And if at that stage you do find that it's catching at all, you just need to take the door out of the frame and do a little bit more sanding until you get it to fit really nicely so that you're not going to have trouble opening it once it's actually glued into place. So you can then remove those pins again and I'm just actually going to hold my thumb there and see how much I need. Actually let me push that in as far as it will go. So don't, don't do it too hard when you're doing that, you just want gentle press just so that it's in all the way. And then you can hold your thumb there again and get an idea of how much you need. So I'm actually just going to cut just under half from the top of the pin there. So use your pliers to do that. This time we've got a thicker frame, so we need to allow for the frame and then how much we want it to go into the door there. So do that with both pins. That much. Need a little bit more off that one. And do the same thing again. So push that bottom pin in. Put the door into place. not quite going to push them in yet, so just leave them sort of sticking out a little bit. And then that top one. And then try your door again, just to be on the safe side. So once those pins are in, you, you won't be able to get them out again without sort of damaging the door and then you can push them all the way in. Push them down on there as well. I've got a little bit sticking out there, but I'm okay with that because I can then push that into the, the actual floor of the doll's house when I come to it. This one might be a little bit long. Yes, yeah, so I'll just trim a little bit more off that one. So 
now we can actually glue this into place. So before I apply any glue, I'm going to dry fit the door. And I've just come into the kitchen here and pushed all of this excess paper out of the way of the actual frame. And I'll tidy that all up once the door's in place and before I then stick the surround into place. So you can then slot the door into place. Make sure as well there's no dust in that little sort of gutter between your floors if you have one. So pop it into place like that, I think that looks really good. And then obviously if you needed to make any adjustments you can do some gentle sanding at this stage. But that fits in there nicely. We knew about that bit of gap in and I'm going to cover that up with the surround. So what I'm actually going to do is apply the glue all the way around but then I'm just actually going to press it into place against this surround here because I'll be able to push the door open and press this side into place and against the floor as well and then when I do the um, sort of external surround that will hold the rest of the door into place. So I'll take this door back into the workshop now and apply glue around the outside of the frame. Okay so I've now got glue around three sides of my frame so slot that into place first going down there in between the floors first to place like that and then very carefully open the door like that and then pull the first frame against the side and push that bottom bit down onto the floor Really give it a good press against the side there. So as long as you've got two sides of your door, door frame sort of stuck into place, it will be secure enough. And if you're working with a brand new doll's house or kit, then you'll probably have a nice square door frame and then you can press it into place all the way around. So what I want to do now is start measuring up for the external door surround. So I've just cut some pieces roughly here. So what you want to do is lay it alongside the door opening so that you're covering up the internal surround. And then you want to make a little mark at the top of the door and again the actual door and not the top of the door surround because obviously we want that part to be covered. So just do a little pencil mark at the top of the door and level with the surround because obviously we don't want the door to get stuck on this surround. And then when we mitre cut that, the mitre cut will come across there like that. So that's just rough, but that's just so you remember which side this piece goes when we go back to the work desk. You can then do the same at the other side of the door. And make sure that you've got the um, external surround placed in the same position. So I want my shaped side on the inside edge of the door. So the flat side will always be on the outside there. So again, get that into position. I'm trying to get my head into the doll's house so that I can look at that sort of face on. And then again, make that little mark at the top of the door, level with the surround, and do your sort of rough mark of where the mitre will go and that's that piece Oops. and then I've got my small piece here to go along the top of the door Oops, just not that piece now. and that will sit again over that gap and that's actually too small I need to cut a larger piece for that so it won't be a moment And then to measure the top piece, put the first two pieces back into place. Sort of stand them where they'll go. Oops. So, so that the shaped part is facing downwards. Lay it across there so that it's flush with this first surround. 
and that's where it will come to. And then you want to make a little pencil mark here at the edge of the door and that will be our mitre. And then I want to do a little pencil mark at this side and the mitre will go that way. Now if you wanted to um, use a little bit of masking tape to hold those door surrounds into place while you do that then you can do that. But once I've cut these I will sort of do a dry fit just to make sure I've got the sizes exactly right. Okay so let's take these back into the craft room and make those cuts. Okay so on the left hand surround I want the mitre joint to start on that little line that I did at the top of the door opening. So position it in the cutter so that the blade of the saw is going to be cut in from that first little mark. So we made that angled line but obviously we're not following that, that was just so we know which way around to cut it. So position it so that the blade is right on that little line that you made at the top of the door and then make the cut like that and then do the same with your other one and obviously this will go the other way around and again I want to position the blade so that it's at that little line there that I made at the top of the door. Oops, well that's laying flat in there as well. Do the same thing again with the top moulding so that the blade of the saw is starting at the little pencil mark that we made at each side of the door. Like that, so that's the top of the door. Move that out of the way. And when you've cut your mitres, if you've got any sort of jagged ends at the end like I have there at the back, rather than sand, just use your craft knife to trim along there because that way you get a straighter cut. If you start sanding you'll alter the shape of the mitre. So just use your craft knife rather than sanding like that and then they'll go together like that and you get that nice neat join then at the top of the door. Look how nicely that pattern then sort of runs in little sort of ridge in the door meets up all the way round. I really like that. So I'm now going to go and dry fit this and see if I need to make any slight adjustments. Yeah so I'm happy with that and then as my door is opening inwards into the kitchen I don't have to worry too much if this top piece is overlapping slightly which from the angle I'm sitting at it looks as though it is although I'm crouched right down so it might actually be right from the top but if this was the side that the door was opening on then I'd have to obviously open the door and check that that cleared it which I can see there it doesn't but as the door is opening inwards as long as that looks neat I'm happy with that and then when I do the kitchen side you would then have to open, hold these into place and open the door and make sure that the door did actually clear, you know, clear the surround. And that's not opening because that paper's sitting in front of it, so I'll need to tidy that up before I do the frame on the other side. So I'll get that frame cut on the other side, and just because of where that room is, it's going to be difficult to get the camera in there, so I'll do that. And then we'll go back into the craft room and actually paint these surrounds up, and then we can get them fitted. But I'm really pleased with how that door looks and it looks really nice next to the stairs as well looking in from this front angle. But anyway let me get the other surrounds cut. So that's the kitchen side external door surrounds cut as well and they certainly weren't as easy as the first ones. One of these kept coming out longer than the other and I couldn't understand why but it's because on the right hand side of the door the surround actually tucked down behind the tile and on the other side it didn't so I've got about a two millimetre difference between those but I couldn't work out why it was going wrong and then obviously because of where my doll's house is positioned now 
I was having to really sort of squeeze into that corner and it was difficult to see in there to get the measurements and everything so that wasn't as easy so I'm quite glad I didn't film that one. <laughs> um, but these are now ready for paint and I just wanted to say that this sort of pre-cut moulded wood isn't always of the best quality so do give it a good sand before you apply your paint. So I've glued the kitchen surrounds into place and I did that off camera just because it's really difficult to get in there like I said earlier and I'm really pleased with how they look and they are now almost completely dry but as I was going along I kept checking that the door would open so that none of the surrounds are overhanging the opening on the side that you want the door to open so you must keep checking that before your surrounds have dried into place otherwise you'll find that your door then won't open. So I now want to glue the entrance hall surrounds into place and thereby sort of sandwiching the door into place. So let me pop the camera down. Begin by attaching the side mouldings. Give them a good press into place and hold until the glue begins to take. Push open the door so you get your fingers right along the frame and make sure that you've got a nice flush edge. When you apply glue to the top moulding, apply it along the mitre cuts as well and then really press them together so that the joins blend. Use clamps where you can. I'm using them along the outside edge of the door but don't leave them on overnight or else they'll dent the wood. Get a couple more in there as well. And then you can press down the other mouldings just until the glue begins to take. So the door frame has now dried into place and it's lovely and flat. And I probably left those clamps on there for about, probably about six minutes I would say. And that was enough just to pull all that together while the glue began to take. And this door now opens and closes really nicely. I think that looks really nice going into the kitchen there as well. So what I want to do now is make a start on the door for the study. And I've already made the frame. And this one is going to be a more traditional style door. So let's go back into the craft room and we'll get started. So for my study door and the rest of the doors in the doll's house, I'm going for a more traditional style. And I'm using the same technique again. So I've cut a piece of sheet wood, 1.5 millimetres, 1 16th of an inch to the size to fit the door surround. And remember, you measure from top to bottom and deduct half a millimetre from the height and then the width is the width of the internal area as it is there and then when we come to sand that long edge that will reduce the width so that we get that nice um, open and closing movement. So that's how you cut your first piece of sheet wood and then I've cut the mouldings here for both sides of the door. Now how I actually worked this out was I measured the kitchen door and where the very sort of centre of the handle came to. So the lever of the handle, I want to be across the centre of that central panel. And that from the bottom of the door was 81 millimetres. So that will sit there like that. So I cut myself a wider strip for the centre and that is 15 millimetres high, which I think is five eighths of an inch. And then at the top and bottom, I've done them 12 millimetres just really because the nine, the 15 millimetres looked a little bit too chunky, sort of there, there and there. And then I've kept the side strips at nine millimetres or three eighths of an inch. And the top and bottom bits were 12 millimetres, half an inch. And then I've really just worked out the panel size by deducting two millimetres from the top and bottom and the side. So I've got that nice two millimetre border around each edge of each panel. And then with these panels, again, I'll bevel them on each side 
as I did with the panels at the bottom of the kitchen door. And then as I'm not making all the doors in one go, I've just kept a note in my cut in this book of all of the sort of sizes that I'm using. So the handle, where the handle's positioned will remain uniform throughout. And then if it comes to it that some of the door openings are slightly different, as long as I keep that 15 millimeter panel level with the door lever or the handle lever, then I may just have to change the size of the top or the bottom panel. Well, it'll be the top panels. So that part will always remain the same. And if I need to make any adjustments, that will happen at the top of the door there. And that won't be noticeable at all from sort of looking into the house. So if you're, if you're doing it this way as well, if you're not cutting all of your doors at the same time, then do make a note of what you've done so that when you come to it again, you don't have to keep getting into your doll's house and measuring the mouldings and, and what you've done previously. Okay, so I'm now going to start sticking the mouldings to the doors. Okay, so I've prepared all of my pieces by giving them a gentle sand on the surface with a piece of 500 grade sandpaper. And I just went round in small circular motions like that over the front of each piece. And that then gives them a nice base for your paint or whatever finish you're going to be using. And now I'm ready to start gluing all of the mouldings into place. So I'll get the side mouldings, top and bottom ones on, and then I'll make that measurement of 81 millimeters where I want the hand, center of the handle to sit. And then I could make a little measurement on there as well. But it's always best to get the pieces on before you make the measurement, because if you put the measurement on your side moulding and then you maybe place it a little bit lower down on one side than you do the other then your measurements obviously aren't going to be straight so get the sort of first pieces into place first before marking up where you know anything needs to go you know what I mean so that's the sort of outside edge mouldings in place. And then I've made a little pencil mark in the center of my central molding or roughly central. And then I'm going to make that pencil mark for my door handle position, which will be 81 millimeters from the bottom. I want to make the little pencil mark on the inside edge so that I can then line those up with it. That one there. And I already checked and cut that piece to size. Each of these just needed a little bit shaving off, which I did with my craft knife. Oops. Glue that into place as well, lining up those marks. that down. I'll get everything glued into place and then clamp everything together and then before I paint the piece I can erase or sand away these pencil marks. And then I can glue my panels into place and I'm just going to do that by eye, leaving an even border around all edges. But if you wanted to make some little measurements, if you're not sort of happy measuring by eye then you can do that. So just sort of get those roughly into position like that and then glue them into place. Okay, so that's all of the mouldings in place. So I'm now going to clamp all those on. And again, I'm going to try and fit as many clamps on here as I can and sort of sit in them over every join. And I probably said this with the last door, but it's really important that you clamp pieces together. As you can see, these are all ready trying to sort of lift up. So really important that you clamp and have a nice flat door. I'll get those big ones out of the way for a minute. <laughs> So I've jiggled things around and brought in some of those larger clamps just to make sure that every piece on there has got a clamp sort of pressing it down towards the, the base of the door. 
Now, whilst that starts to dry, I can prepare the next lot of mouldings and then turn over, do the same thing again, and then just put all of these clamps back into place. So my mouldings have now dried into place and I left that drying for a good three hours and then I've just sanded along the top and bottom to get the door to fit into my frame from top to bottom and I also use sandpaper to erase the pencil marks on there. So I'm now going to round off the long edge of my door which is going to become the hinged edge. So I've rounded off both long edges of that side of the door and that now fits really nicely into my frame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint the door and the frame and then I shall fit the pins for the hinges. Once the second coat of paint had dried, I sanded the door on both sides using a 500 grade sandpaper. Fold the sandpaper in half to easily get along the edges of the mouldings. And don't forget to sand the door frame as well. You may also need to do some extra sanding around the edges of the door to get it to fit snugly back into the frame. With the door and frame flat against your work surface, push pins into the holes at the top and bottom of the door to make indentations for where you need to drill the holes. Secure the door into a desk vise and drill the holes using a 0.75mm bit or a bit as thick as a dressmaking pin. Drill down about a quarter of an inch or 6mm. Check that you've drilled down far enough by using a dressmaking pin. Hold your thumb at the top of the pin and check that you've gone down far enough. Then do the same at the other end of the door. Attach the door handles using your usual wood glue or PVA. Use pliers to cut one of your dressmaking pins in half. And I'm going just a little bit over half there, so about there. And then push the pointed end of the pin through the hole at the bottom of the door. And then fit the bottom of the door into place. And the hole at the bottom there is quite near the edge of the door. So get the pin in like that and then you can push it against your work surface to help push it in. Don't go all the way in yet. And then you can cut another pin for the top of the door. Same thing again, and this one might be a little bit trickier to find because you're sort of doing it blindly. So just sort of feel the top of the pin, or feel with the top of the pin until you can feel it go into that hole. And that was quite lucky, that went in quite easily. Again, just leave that poking out a little bit, and then you can try your door. Make sure it's opening nicely. Once you're happy that it does, then you can push those pins all the way in. Same at the other end. Okay, and the door can now be fitted into the doll's house. So again, apply glue around the edges of your door frame. So I dry fitted this before I put the glue on and it is really, really tight. So I'm just going to try and work it in there rather than make any adjustments now to the surround so it went in okay at the bottom there it's just this top bit actually that's not too bad maybe the glue has sort of lubricated it a little bit it's actually a really nice fit so i'm using my fingers there to make sure the frame is flush with the wall okay so i'm going to open the door and again, that is a little bit tight. 
I'll just do it really carefully so as not to split any of the wood and then I can really pull against that frame and because that's such a nice fit it's sort of holding itself in the kitchen door I think I had a little bit of gapping around the edge so I needed to sort of really press that into place but this one is sort of doing all the work for me okay so I'm going to let that dry off for a moment and I'm going to go and cut some strips of the surround and measure for the mitre joins as we did with the kitchen door Perfect. Sand each of the pieces and I'm using a 240 grade this time just because as I mentioned before this wood isn't the best quality so you might need something a little bit harsher just to get rid of all those little knots and marks in the wood. Get rid of your pencil marks as well. So these pieces are now ready for paint. So that's both sides now fitted into place. Let's go and have a look from that side as well. But I am now going to go round on both of those doors with my fine wood filler and just fill in some of those sort of smaller gaps and then I'll bring the paint back in and touch up obviously the filler. I'll do that on the kitchen door as well. And this is the filler that I like to use. It's a Ron Seal Smooth Finish filler and it's really fine, so really good for miniature work. But any sort of smooth finish wood filler will do. And it's got a lovely fine texture. And you really do only need a tiny amount. And it works really nicely into the gaps. Once you've allowed enough time for the filler to dry, do any gentle sanding that may be needed and if you only use a tiny amount of that filler, I find that it sort of works so well into the gaps that you really don't need to do a lot of sanding afterwards. And then you can touch up your paint. And there we are, two doors down and five to go. And as I said before, as I complete the other doors, because I'll be using this same technique, I'll update you in later episodes of My Doll's House Diary. And I'll also show you how I do the double door leading into the dining room, which again will be a similar technique, but obviously I'll just be making two doors to fit into the surround. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and you found those tutorials helpful and that you'll feel inspired as well to have a go at making your own doll's house doors. Before I go I just want to say hello to Marie Parker who's in Canada and say thank you for sending me this wonderful book which she herself published some years ago and it's called Something Small, A Guide to Making Miniature Furnishings and there are some wonderful projects in here and a couple of them have given me some ideas for my own projects. <laughs> Now Marie, I hope you don't mind me saying, but Marie is 96 years old and she's been a miniaturist for many years. Now she's unable to work on miniatures anymore, but she does still enjoy watching the videos. So it's lovely to know you're watching Marie and I'm glad you're enjoying following along as I furnish my doll's house. So once again, thank you for this lovely book and for the beautiful poem which you sent along with it. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.